Hey guys, my name is Casey and this is my service dog Elsa. Today we will be going over healing, part two. If you have not seen part one, please go to the link up here in the cards or down in the link in the description. Now there's a pretty big gap between these videos as you can probably see. Not sure why it took me so long to film the second part. I have been trying to film the last couple weeks, but unfortunately in California, We've been having some rainstorms, unfortunately, on the days I normally film. So, it might start raining any minute here, so I'm going to try to keep this quick. Okay, so if you've already mastered healing part one, which is where we talk about the position of heal, today we're going to talk about putting movement in there. So we're going to talk about walking. Now, as I explained in my healing part one video, as a service dog handler and as a service dog, my service dog doesn't heal directly next to me or do a competition heal where they're staring up at me the entire time. Now this is a personal choice for my personal dog because of the work she does. For you, you can use these same methods to achieve a professional or um, competition style heal. What you're doing is just going to be hiring your criteria to have them looking at you the entire time in a tighter heel right next to you. This is something that you are going to want to decide before training this. Just how close they are to you and just how much they are looking up at you. So like I said, for me personally and my service dog, she will be not directly next to me. There'll be a slight gap. The reason for this is my service dog typically wears gear and if she's directly up against me, that gear is generally scratching and hitting my leg and so I don't like that. So because my dog generally nor uses gear, she is positioned a slightly farther bit away than say a competition heel. Again, with the staring up at me the whole time for my service dog, she is in heel pretty much all the time throughout all the stores. I don't expect her to look up at me 24 seven. One, she could run into stuff and uh, to, it kind of does do a strain on their neck doing that so often. Um, so for competition heel, yes, you'll probably want that, uh, but it is shorter distances just when you're showing off your um, heel. So for her, she's not going to be staring up at me the entire time. She'll be doing slight check-ins. So if you want a competition heel, you're just going to hire your criteria and work on that. Consistency is key, guys, with training. You pick your what you want your dog to do and you, they will understand as long as you're not changing every two seconds to a different criteria. So here we go, healing, part two, walking. Uh, like we talked about in part one, you want a wall to work with. Uh, I'm here at the park today because we have long fence lines. This is a great place to come to practice heal. You want a long, preferably straight fence. So this is a pretty long fence I have right here. It doesn't have to be super long when you're beginning because you're not going to be going that far. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get her in the heel position. So I have my treats here. Come here. Ready? Heel. Good girl. Now like I was saying earlier, the position is your criteria. So if you always want her shoulder to be at your leg, which is more competition based heel, then you want to only reward it when she's in that position. If you're a little bit more lax, like I don't mind her being a little bit further ahead, more at her girth, mainly because she is a smaller dog, and two, when she does other tasks, this is typically where she hits anyway. So back, heel. Good girl. All right, so you want to put her in the position first. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the leash. We don't want to make this a handicap. It's very easy to make the leash a handicap. If you're having problems with that, go ahead and take your leash off as long as you have a really good recall since we are outside and not in our house. I am going to start by taking one step and saying heel. Heel. Good. Now for competition based heel, I believe Now for competition based heel, I believe that they do have to sit when you stop. 
Um, I could be wrong on that. I don't do a lot of competition based heel. For me personally, I don't care if she sits or not. But at this point, if you want your dog to sit when you stop healing, you want to start implementing that now. Sit. Good. And this could be easily done by when you take a step, go ahead and treat them up so they have to sit like this. Heel. Yes. You can murmur it like that if they really look at you like they have no clue what you're talking about. All right. Free. Good girl. Now, an important thing there, Elsa, come here, is we want to add a free word to heal. To have a really good heal, just like having a really good stay, you want to have a free word or a break word so they know when they're doing it and when they're not doing it. So same thing with heal. Of course, right there I used free. You can use okay, release, whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our fence. Heel. Make sure I start in the right position. Then take one step. Heel. Good. Of course, like I said, I don't normally expect a sit. Free. Good girl. And I go ahead, say free. Let her break the position by going out in front of me and then giving her the reward. So after you've gotten one step and they're not darting out in front of you, uh, Elsa already knows this, so your dog's probably going to do that a couple times. Simply correct uh, a light correction, not very hard, and say, uh-uh, come back here. And they're going to be working for the treat. So let's see, come here. Let's see if I can throw her off so I can show you what you would do. Yep. Apparently I cannot. Free! Good girl! So, just like that, that is another thing that you could do. Quick steps forward. Uh, just make sure healing is really, really, really takes a long time. You've got to put work into healing and that's how you're going to get a good heal. Elsa, let's go. Good job. Elsa, heal. Good girl. So after you take one step and she's in, this is not a heel. Back. Heel. Heel. Thank you. Good girl. <clears throat> after you take one step and she, you're doing really successful runs with one step, go ahead and take two steps. Heel. Good. Heel. Good job. Free. Good job. Let's go. Heel. Good girl. Heel. Yes. Good girl. Come here. Free. Good girl. So as you can see in the beginning, I might say heel every time I walk. That is just to help pair the command. After you do that a little bit, they know the command. They are walking and stopping with you. You can start phasing that out to the first time you say heel and then keep them in there. Again, just like stay. We don't want to repeat all the time, but we want to make sure they understand healing or staying and the reward least word. So in order to do that, you kind of have to repeat in the beginning. Ready? Let's go. Heel. Good heel. Heel. Good girl. Free. Elsa, come here. Sit. So just like stay, I know I'm comparing heel to stay. It really is very close in commands as far as what you expect. You say it once and you want them to continue doing it until you say release. Heel is a little harder because there is movement involved, but once they get the concept, it's very close on how you train. 
slowly escalating distraction, duration, and not really distance for heel, actually. So duration and, um, well, distance actually in the walking. So yes, all three Ds. Dur <laughs> duration, distraction, distance. And the distance is the walking part. So they're actually not distant from you. They're just going a distant. Um, so yes, in that way, it's the same. So you start with one step, put two steps in there, put, and then you can start going longer and longer. Don't always break at the end of the fence. So don't always go from one end of the fence and always break at the end. Sometimes mix it up so your dog understands the break word, not the situation. So go from the end of the fence to the middle and then break there, or from the middle to the end and break there. So you could get certain stop. Once you feel very confident with your dog doing that, you can also start moving away from the fence because we don't want to rely on the fence. <sighs> Good girl. One second. We don't want to rely on the fence to um, always have a heel. So we want to move away from the fence. But once your dog, but if your dog is starting to get farther away from you, than you want them to, you can go back to the fence to kind of push them back into you to kind of create that muscle memory. Again, you might be doing that a little bit more if you want a tighter heel. So let's go again, showing you a little bit farther away from the fence. Let's go. Good girl. Heel. Good. Good job. Sit. Good girl. All right. So I got to go. If you haven't noticed, she's been nudging me. That's her alert behavior. So, and I think we're going to be expecting rains. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was very helpful. Please comment down below if you have any questions and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you next time. Bye.